Welcome to Specific Love. Over the past couple years of me making French cleats, I get asked common questions over and over again. So for this video, I'm gonna answer those questions, plus give you a few tips and tricks so you'll be ahead of the game. Let's begin. One of the most common questions I get about French cleats is what is the proper distance between the cleats on the wall? The quick and dirty answer is, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have enough room for the cleats on your back of your holder to fit in between the cleats on the wall, it can be as wide or narrow as you would like. Now something else to keep in mind about the spacing between the cleats is what is this going to be used for? If you're going to be using it in a workshop, for example, like I am here with large tools, for example this tool, even though it's only hanging for one cleat, it's taking up the space of two. I can have my cleats a little bit wider apart and still be able to have plenty of space for my tools. Now if you're going to be using this, say, in a pantry where most of your item is going to be really small, probably a good idea to have your cleats a lot closer together. Therefore, you can use a lot more space on your wall. The next question I get is how big do you want each of your cleats on your wall to be? For example, these, this is about three, three and a half inches tall. And this is what I prefer, especially in a workshop. The reason why is you want to be able to have at least two screws going into each stud. You could make this taller if you'd like, but I wouldn't make it any smaller because the smaller it is, the weaker it's going to be. Now, if you're going to be putting this in, say, a cabinet or maybe in some light duty stuff in the kitchen, you might be able to get away with a little bit smaller. But definitely in a workshop where you have a bunch of heavy tools, specifically where you're having heavy tools, definitely three to three and a half inches. Now, is it possible to add French cleats to just a stud wall? The answer is, well, yes and no. I don't personally recommend it, but it is possible. Here's why I don't recommend it. When you have French cleats just on a studded wall here, you have the ability to still hang all your stuff. But without that bracing back here, it doesn't provide that extra snug fit. For example, your cleats and your wall actually create a wedging factor, so when you add the cleat holder, it locks itself between the cleat that's on the wall and the wall itself, thus keeping it from moving around. Also, another reason. When you have your cleats just on studs and you have a very large and heavy tool and you hook it on the top, it wants to swing in at the bottom. All right? Now, if you had a wall there, you could create a little bump stop and that way it don't do that swinging motion. But if you do not have any kind of backing here, that tool is gonna wanna continually pull and swing down, thus creating a lot more pressure on the top of your cleat and probably breaking it off after a little bit of time. So therefore, I strongly recommend having your cleat on top of some kind of a wall over your studs. In many cases, I do recommend having at least a half inch thick wall. That just gives it some extra strength, but it's up to you. You can try whatever works for you. Now, is three quarter inch wood stock necessary for French cleats in a workshop? I would say always, especially when you're gonna have heavy tools. That way, when you have the two screws going into each stud, you know that this is gonna handle a lot of weight and a lot of abuse. Now, I would not go with anything smaller just because, well, I'd be concerned about it breaking a lot quicker. So, three quarter inch stock, always. What's better for French cleats, solid wood or plywood? Well, that's been a debate for years. So, let me tell you the pros and cons of each. Solid wood. It can easily be found in almost every home improvement store. You can easily find this in the three quarter inch stock that you need. You can also get an eight, 10, and 12 foot lengths. It's easy, you just go to the store, buy it, throw it in your car, go home, and cut the edge that you need on it for your cleat. A few things you need to look out for, though, are knots. It's very common when you're looking for the boards that you'll have large knots. This happens to be a small one, but a large knot in your wood will weaken your cleat. You do not want that. Also, you need to be careful with anything that has any big bows or warps or any kind of twists in it. So finding that can sometimes be a challenge unless you go up to the, the more premium type of wood. In this case, this is a, a premium type of pine. I've never had any problems with using pine, but some people prefer hardwoods. You can go with that as well. Plywood is also a good source to make some of your French cleats from. One of the drawbacks though, of course, is buying it in a four by eight sheet. You can't just throw it in your car real easily. You're probably gonna need a truck or borrow a truck from a friend. Also, when you're buying plywood, make sure you have a measuring tool with you because your home improvement store in a lot of cases will say, hey, this is three quarter inch and no, it's not. 
you're gonna have stuff that's either much larger or much smaller and they still call it three quarter inch. I don't know why, but that's what you'll find. Now, one of the drawbacks as well is watch out for delamination. If you find anything that is pulling apart in your plywood, do not buy it. That is a weak point in your French cleats that can easily be a safety hazard and it break off the wall. Once you get past all of that, plywood is a great source, especially if you go probably with the more premium hardwood version like birch. It's a lot stronger. In a lot of cases, it's glued together very well and you don't have to worry about it coming apart. But just be careful because it could still happen. Once you get it home, you probably have to lay it on the floor and use a circular saw. Just be careful cutting everything out. But in many cases, you can even save a little bit of money buying plywood over buying a lot of the single lumber. So solid wood or plywood, that is up to you. Now, is it possible to attach French cleats to a concrete wall? Well, yes and no. We'll start with the nose first. First off, most concrete block walls are hollow inside. In other words, if you try and drill screws into it, it's not gonna be very strong because you're gonna hit that hollow area. Two, when you're dealing with concrete, it can handle a lot of pressure from the top. It is supporting a house. But when you try and drill into it and pull from the side, it is not nearly as strong. So to avoid any kind of issues with that, what you need to do is actually build a frame. You want to build a 2x4 frame with 16 inch center supports that will be able to securely to attach to the floor and you can securely attach it to the joists above. And once you do that, then you can add a wall and add your French cleats. Now when you're designing your cleats, it's a good idea to design all of your holders to be one hand removal. That way if you're in the middle of a project and you're trying to hold something down and you need something, you can just reach up. You don't even have to think about it. You can grab it off. You can easily use it. For example, that right there is the circular saw, and here is the jigsaw. And in both cases, you can easily grab it and pull it off. So make sure, one-handed removal for all your holders. Now, anytime you're going to be building a large French cleat holder, for example, this is my drill station, it's a good idea to try and utilize every single side of it. For example, I have stuff on the top, I have the drills underneath, I have the ability to hang stuff on the sides. So whether you're doing a drill station like this, or maybe even a lumber rack, try to utilize all sides so you're not wasting space. Now when you're making your French cleat holders, it's a good idea to have them have a little bit of weight to them. Not exactly weigh them down, but in this case here, I have four, or no, five actual little pliers hooked onto it, which means it has a little bit of weight and it's not likely to fall off the wall. Now this is one of my early additions of French cleats. This is for little can openers. Now this right here, it's so lightweight, when I went to take it off, in many cases, it would come with the tool. In another case, I'd bump it and it would go flying off the wall. I barely even touched it. So whenever you're making French cleats, it's a good idea not to make them really small. If you have a small tool, try to encompass three or four of them together on one cleat setup. That way it has some weight and it's less likely to fall off. Now, whenever you're designing your French cleat holders, definitely keep this in mind. If you have a workbench or any other tools that might be mobile, like this, you want to make sure anytime you're going to have your tools or your bench up against the wall, that your French cleats are going to clear. For example, there. I had to design these holders to be just high enough so when I pushed my workbench up against my wall, it wasn't going to collide with them. Just keep that in mind. Now, whenever you're designing your French cleats, it's a good idea to try and get them as close to the wall as possible so that you don't run into them or, or knock them off the wall. In this case right here, I built this with a desk and it's a good idea. I used it a bunch, but I bumped into it so many times that I eventually knocked it off and broke it. Now, again, I'm going to redesign this in the future, but in any case, anytime you're gonna design like a desk or anything for that matter that sticks way out, Design it so that you can fold it in whenever you're not using it. That way you don't have to worry about breaking it or getting bruises. Now if you can't tell already, I love French cleats. In fact, I've put together a playlist of over 100 different ideas showing you all the different tools and holders that I have in my shop. That way you can utilize them yourself. Also, if you're interested in some locking French cleats or maybe the ability to make French cleats without using a table saw, I've made videos on that as well. I'll put a link to all those in the description below so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. Also, French uh, outtake. <laughs> French cleat outtake. <laughs> also, I have the ability, I have the ability, wow, I can't talk in this video. Also, I have the ability, I, why do I keep saying I have the ability? I don't know. 
try it again. If you like blocking French cleats, I, I don't know why I'm stuttering through this. One more try.